I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Tez Ilyas, Kerry Godleyman and Ed Byrne, James Acaster, Hugh Dennis and Tom Allen. <laughs> we start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So what's going on here? Tell you what, <laughs> Harry Potter's aged a bit. This is the one on the left a member of the cabinet, and he's just realised he's a member of the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> you think it might just be an, a new way of getting rid of her? They're going, you hide, Theresa. Mm -hmm. We may never find you. <laughs> Has Theresa May just told that bloke there that Danny Dyer and Jack Ma split up on Love Island? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a twist on the sort of three wise monkeys, sort of see no evil, hear quite a lot of evil. <laughs> And uh, let me be clear about this, evil means evil. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it actually looks like a very sort of typical Tory tableau where, the, where the, Theresa's going, I know you've run away and you're not happy there, but your father and I are sending you straight back to boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> I know the beatings are hateful, but it will make a man of you. <laughs> Why do I feel that this comes from a very deep place, Hugh? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know I didn't go to boarding school. <clears throat> that is a common misconception. <laughs> So has Theresa May just told him that there's no more poor brown people left in the Middle East to test British weapons on? <laughs> oh, oh. Controversial. Oh, interesting. Uh, yes. <laughs> You're not sure what way to react to that, are you? Yes. <laughs> if I delivered it, you'd know how to react, but he delivered it, and now you're conflicted. Uh... <laughs> is the man on the left displaying shame? And Theresa May is just fascinated because she's never experienced emotions before. <laughs> See, I don't know what's going on with her face. That's the face I'm like, am I... Is my skirt tucked in my knickers? <laughs> well, like, she just said something like, do you know that we're in charge of a bit of Ireland? <laughs> 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 Looks like he uh, just accidentally called Theresa May mum. <laughs> 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 Does anyone have the correct answer? Well, it's Gavin Williamson. It is. And, I, and he is one of the members of the Cabinet who are kind of lining themselves up to take over from Theresa May if she resigns. Yes, that's close enough. Thank you very much, you. Uh, yeah. Yes, this is Prime Minister Theresa May, her husband Philip, and Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson pictured at this weekend's Armed Forces Day. This week, Theresa May has come under increased pressure amidst rumours of a number of ministers lining up to challenge her for leadership of the Conservative Party. So, who is putting Theresa May under this pressure? Gavin Williamson, obviously, being one of those. We can't have a Prime Minister called Gavin, can we? Like, Gavin... <laughs> <laughs> Someone you went to school with who was always like, always had a runny nose. <laughs> he was her campaign manager, so he said that if I, I, I made her, I can destroy her. I, yeah, oh. I can make her out and break her. Yeah, he said I can break her. And really... then he went, Do you want to go to Pride? <laughs> <laughs> he, he That's got not the whole point of making something, is it? Yeah, it's well, if you make something, you don't look forward to breaking it. I don't make a cake and go, I can't wait to break that cake. <laughs> do you make a cake you and then leave, leave it, it untouched? Yeah, you, uh, do, yeah. Yeah. you do break it. Is your house like some weird cereal killer? I can presume it is anyway, James. Uh, <laughs> but just like loads of cakes under glass domes. Yeah, and, and I'll stroke them all before I go and do Mock the Week. <laughs> <laughs> For a little bit of good luck. See you later, cakey. That's one of them. That's only one of their names. I'm not telling you all their names, otherwise you'll have control over them. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt's after a job as well, isn't he? He is, yeah. Once someone else comes in, he's out of a job forever, surely. They just shoot him up with cannon. <laughs> <laughs> That's... 
Food oh, that's not what they do. I, I like this. So that whoever comes in next gets to fire the previous cannon. Literally. Uh, out of a cannon. cannon. Yeah. <laughs> Does it lead to a net, this cannon, or is it like... Better not land in one of my cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so angry. If they smash cakey. If I smash up cakey and Jeremy Hunt's there, <laughs> just sitting in Vicky, she's a Victoria sponge. Of course you Now we have two. Yeah. <laughs> well, Keep on talking, Dara, we'll get yeah. the best. <laughs> Yes, uh, Gavin demanded more money because the NHS got more money. And, and he's got guns and stuff, isn't he? So yeah, it's but going to be quite difficult fewer to turn guns him than down. He'd like. And the point was made to him, Gavin, we're not at war, you know, so we're not spending two billion, you know, because if we're at war, Gavin, you come back here. The minute we're at war, I want to yeah. hear your footsteps running down that corridor. I want to hear. <laughs> I've already got the checkbook out. Look, my, pan, my pen's hovering, but until we're at war, not at war. Mm, no, not at war, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gavin, look out the window. Is there a war? No, there's no war. So no pen. <laughs> I think it's all very undignified, Dara, all this arguing all the time. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, that ordinary people, they just have their arguments maybe in a supermarket car park, but then, <laughs> like, rich, posh people, they do it in the columns of Sunday newspapers. <laughs> so, do you think it would be better if, say, The Telegraph on a Sunday opened up its common pages to, as you say, poor people, uh, who wish to continue... I said, I said ordinary people. Ordin well, it was implied. Uh, uh... <laughs> The thing is, everything I say, that does Tom, I think it was the disgust with which you used the phrase supermarket car park. <laughs> <laughs> that was not really... What would you say, Spencer? Well, just cos you get Ocado to deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think it would be better if the Telegraph opened its comment pages to ordinary people who are having domestic arguments to basically have an 800-word piece with the headline, No, Terry, I am not a slag. Your mother is a slag. <laughs> and a well-argued... Yes. Yeah. I mean, have you seen how successful ITV is? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Go got no, there. What Go's doing it. Well, Go's very upset. Apparently, he ripped up a uh, report detailing May's new proposals for a customs partnership. Didn't he? In disgust. Literally ripped it up. Literally. It literally ripped it up. And you're looking at it, sheet you think... of that man. Can you imagine? Yeah. The is... sheer primal rage of Michael <laughs> yeah. Go. Also, he's the environment secretary. He should not be wasting paper by ripping it up. <laughs> <laughs> He looked like he was a frog and then got kissed by a princess, but only halfway transformed. Into <laughs> <laughs> Which unexpected figure, however, crystallised the nation's feelings about Brexit this week? It's Danny Dyer, isn't it? It was Danny Dyer, yes. Is it the, the dad one, not the it's other the, one? It's the dad, Danny, yeah, rather not the than, one, than the daughter. The other Danny Dyer. Yeah, the daughter, Danny... It's, Danny, it's uh, chaos now with two Danny oh, Dyers. God. It's, just, it's more mm -hmm. confusing for me, cos uh, Danny Dyer is the name of a carrot cake I made. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Danny Dyer has, 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 as you say, crystallised the, uh, the nation's feelings in that he called David Cameron a twat, <laughs> which had a lot of impact, He's considering... Going, especially considering he was sitting next to Piers Morgan when he said it. <laughs> now, <laughs> how much do you need to hate somebody that you would call somebody else that word? Well, <laughs> Piers Morgan is within earshot. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it, we would love to show you the clip, but there are rights issues and also that we can't. <coughs> However, as we face one of the great speeches of <coughs> modern political life, um, we, it, it sounds best if it's delivered properly. Hugh, as, could you possibly deliver the <laughs> full... <laughs> Danny Dyer In sort of um, <coughs> <coughs> Who knows about Brexit? No one's got a fucking clue. <laughs> you watch Question Time. It's comedy. No, I ain't got a clue. It's like this mad riddle that no one knows what it is, right? <laughs> so what's happened to that twat David Cameron who called it on? <laughs> Let's be fair. How come he can scuttle off? He called all this on, yeah? Where is he? He's in Europe, in Nice, with his trotters up, yeah. <laughs> Where is... The geezer. <laughs> I think he should be held to account for it. He should be held to account for it. Twat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> as a representative of the underclass, um, did I just witness cultural appropriation there? <laughs> 
you scuttle if you got trotters? <laughs> In other news, what's going on here? <clears throat> Is that miniaturised Jeremy Corbyn gets trapped in a shopping trolley? <laughs> Is that Jeremy Corbyn runs into trouble at the US border being mistaken for a Mexican toddler? <laughs> Is someone about to push him through it like Play-Doh? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying, please, please, please pay whatever they're asking for my release. <laughs> they don't have hummus here and the jam isn't organic. <laughs> Spearmint Rhino unveil their new cage dancer. <laughs> I think somebody's just asked him about Brexit, so now he's trying to climb onto the fence so he can sit on it. Why has Corbyn come under pressure this week? He's the leader of the opposition and he's not opposing anything. Is that... <laughs> that yeah. is, yeah. No. That's probably getting inching closer to the truth, all right, yeah. yeah. I think his position is very hard because a lot of people in the Labour heartlands of the North voted to Brexit. Yep. And so you can't just abandon them because if he loses the North, then the Lannisters will win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hmm. At the end of that round, the point's going to test Kerry in. Now we play a round called Gove Island. This game <laughs> involves Tez and Tom. See if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a style of challenge. I launch the wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. OK, let's spin the wheel. The first subject is religion. Who wants to go in that? Tez. Um, I'm religious, uh, not very popular these days. It, 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 um, it surprises me how much people don't know about my religion, Islam, given how much it's in the news. Um, I've got a... <laughs> <laughs> we, we've nailed that. Um, <laughs> I've got a good friend called Jonathan. We've been friends for years. He doesn't know that much about me. A couple of months ago, me and Jonathan were in a nice restaurant having a nice meal. Uh, next to us, a table, minding their own business. we minding our own business. Everyone's having a wonderful time. Halfway through my meal, the balloon closest to me from the birthday table, it burst. And I just shouted out in my excitement, Jesus Christ, Jonathan <laughs> lost his damn mind. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus Christ, is it? What happened to your Alan and Mohammed now, mate? <laughs> I'm like, Jonathan, what have you won? He went, nah, mate, it's just you bang on about being Muslim, yeah? But in that moment when you were scared, when you were fearful for your safety, you didn't think of Allah, you didn't think of Muhammad, your mind went straight to a Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. What does that shit say about you, rubbish Muslim? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonathan, I can clearly see this the best day of your life. <laughs> Three things. Thing number one, you should be aware of this, but if you're not, for Muslims, Jesus, that's our vice captain. <laughs> uh, secondly, me just invoking Jesus Christ is just me invoking a British cultural saying. If anything, it shows how well integrated I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thirdly, most importantly, Jonathan, if at that moment there was a loud bang, I shouted in Arabic, you'd have shit yourself! <laughs> Thank you very much, Charles. Very good. OK, that leaves us with Tom. Let's see what your topic is. Let's oh. spin the wheel. The topic is driving. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I have to drive because I run like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd, I don't want you guys to think I'm a failure just because I live at home with my mum and dad and I'm 35 years old. <laughs> Uh, because recently, one of the things I did is I finally passed my driving test! <laughs> you, you would not clap if you'd seen me do it. I find, found the whole process very stressful and I get quite nervous about it. And people aren't very much help when you feel nervous. Like I say, oh, I'm feeling nervous, and they go, oh, don't be nervous! <laughs> oh, thanks very much, I hadn't thought of it like that! <laughs> Where I 
live. When you first pass your driving test, everyone has to go on this one rite of passage drive to an out of town shopping centre which goes by the name of Blue Water. <laughs> and so I decided I wouldn't go on my own. I'll take someone, I thought I'd take someone with me. I'll take my dad with me because I've got a good relationship with my dad and I thought this would be a great way to end it. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, the last thing my dad taught me how to do was how to box, yeah, uh, <laughs> when I was being picked on at school. Can you imagine? Uh, and he was just standing there going, it's all right, you just got to punch my hands, just try and punch my hands. I was cowering in the corner going, no, Dad, no, I can't do it, I can't deal with confrontation, it doesn't sound right in my accent. <laughs> my dad was going, oh, I thought you'd be much better at this. I mean, you've already got the silk dressing gown on and everything. <laughs> So we're sat there in the car, right, and there's already a tension, and we're, we're going along, and uh, we come to some traffic lights, and they're red. That means you have to stop. I've done the theory test as well. <laughs> anyway, the lights went from red to amber to green, and I went to drive off, and what happened is I stalled the engine. And my dad, bless him, he turned to me and he said, Concentrate! <laughs> Which is such a calming thing to say. <laughs> Thank you very much, well done, both of you. And that round of applause will do Tessalia! So good. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Kerry, which category would you like? Home news, please. Your category is home news. The answer is chicken, <clears throat> beer and crumpets. What is the question? Is it the nicknames I've given my nipples? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the name of Gwyneth Paltrow's children? <laughs> what did Gaza turn up with when Maradona was in hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, in my song about my favourite things, what line comes after Dickens, Deers and drum kits? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what is the name of the least successful Earth, Wind and Fire tribute act? <laughs> <laughs> is it, what is the password to my new secret chicken, beer and crumpets club? <laughs> <laughs> is it what Nigella Lawson calls for the second the camera switches <laughs> off? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the wrap. Give us some beer! <laughs> Bring a fag out of the oven. <laughs> oh, give us <a> beer! <laughs> Is it people who searched for turkey, wine and muffins? <laughs> also searched for. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what my bra smells like on New Year's Day? <laughs> <laughs> Kerry, do you say crumpet or do you say crumpe? <laughs> We're coming from very different. I am not as posh as I think I am. <laughs> Uh, are those crumpe toaste? <laughs> <laughs> You're very Waitrose, I'm a bit it. more Aldi. Yeah. Oh, Aldi's great, though, for bread. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Don't surprise> me. <laughs> and, and the car park is a wonderful place to have an argument with women. <laughs> <laughs> I go there all the time just to watch. I <laughs> didn't have the correct answer. It's oh. what, what are we going to have a shortage of, I think, because of the CO2... Shortage. Absolutely right. Thank you very much. Yes, the question I was looking for was what foods have been affected by a recent shortage of CO2? Chicken, beer, and crumpets are just some of the things in short supply in the UK owing to a temporary break in the production of carbon dioxide. Now, what way has the country been affected by the CO2 crisis? In uh, Asda online, you can, they're rationing the amount of Coke and Pepsi you can buy to six massive bottles. <laughs> <laughs> How, how am I meant to have a fizzy bath? <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming to the rescue in the CO2 crisis? The Norwegians. The Norwegians? What are the Norwegians bringing? They're sending a barge yep. ah. with 10,000 tonnes of CO2 yes. on it to our rescue. This does sound like a scam, though, in a kind of a... Yes, I've got your odourless invisible gas. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd just like to sign here and give me the cheque. <laughs> I have it in my pocket right here. Like it's amazing it. how small it is <laughs> uh, when, you just, when you just compact it down. Yeah. Careful, 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 careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's yours now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really brutal, 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 brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Run off in that? Norwegian. Was that? that was Norwegian for... Uh, we've done it, we've done it. Quick, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> I, 
I found a way around the fizzy drinks thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nando's do bottomless soft drinks. <laughs> <laughs> You've solved that one, haven't you? For the price of one, I've got it forever. <laughs> yes, but... <I'm... laughs> The following day, you're standing there, totally. they're unlocking and you're just standing at the door going, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I was just wondering, Dara, if you read about Britain's potato shortage and felt the same way I did. Was that yeah. a, little, a little wry smile, maybe? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well. If you will rely on potatoes, you'll find that'll bite you in the arse sometimes. <laughs> A, in other news, what's going on here? There yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Explain to us what football is, Tom. Explain. <laughs> it's where all the straight people go. <laughs> <laughs> so, England on Tuesday progressed to the quarter-finals of the World Cup, where they face Sweden on Saturday. But who's, without gloating, had a bad World Cup? Germany. Germany, Germany have very Germany won a very World Cup. They're the previous world champions. Yeah. But I guess it's not the first time that Germany have become unstuck in Russia. <laughs> oh. Oh, what, too soon? Uh... Hopefully, um, hopefully they'll react better this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, who is becoming a likely fashion icon of this tournament? Oh, oh the England manager, yeah, yeah, yeah. him! Yes. <laughs> I wear a lot of waistcoats as well, may I say. So I don't know if it's exclusively Gareth Southgate who's made them popular. Well, I mean, the... <laughs> all I'm saying, it... Gareth, is I see you. If you shoot for the king, you better not miss. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as England starts to do well, it's always like, oh, we, we, we could win this. Yeah. Does it, does, see this guy who got a tattoo of saying England World Cup winners 2018 tattooed on his belly. Oh, there he is. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah he, he looks exactly like I that... imagined. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, what problems has heatwave caused? Fires. Fires. Yes, yeah. so it's an almost elemental. Fire! Fire. <laughs> Only there was a metaphor available to describe the wildfire spreading. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we name heatwaves? We name cold snaps and storms, don't we? Ooh, yeah. We should name a heatwave Sweaty Betty, Claggy Brenda. <laughs> I, I love it. I've been wearing my shades. Wearing my shades, and I, I've become a different person when I've got my shades on. Called Cool James. <laughs> <laughs> cool James is like, would you like to meet him? I, I'm excited now, yes. I thought Cool James was the name of your Eccles cakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no way. That's cool. That's cool. Really cool. Hey, cool. I don't know who's. Pretty cool guy is, but welcome to Mock the Week. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> okay, cool, James. Uh, <laughs> how does cool James feel about continuity within a television program? <laughs> hey, you tell all those editors in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Edit in a show down. Not cool. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. He, he went away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what doesn't work? Cool Hugh. That doesn't work. <laughs> Just hey, hey, even cool Hugh. I'd like you to meet my friend, Blind Ed. <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read at this week's topics and we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear on a property show. So it's a two up, two down. It's unusual, but those are the testicles I was born with. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We'll be looking at houses that have been designed by someone's nan. Yes, it's grand designs. <laughs> of course, finding something in London on your budget was very, very difficult. So this 
property does come with a bit of a commute. Welcome to Stoke. <laughs> All property is theft. Good night. <laughs> bit mean, but we've put together a montage of first-time buyers being told about stamp duty for the first time. <laughs> for an extension. He went and got a conservatory. I actually meant a penis enlargement. <laughs> this week, Bert has bought a yurt. And that sentence alone makes this the most fun show we've ever done. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kirsty Olsop, and this week I'll be patronising more millennials. You can't have dreams and a second bedroom. Wake up. <laughs> Well, this used to be a railway station, but there haven't been any trains here for nearly 40 years. It's Haywood's Heath on Southern Railway. <laughs> <laughs> and Simon has converted this railway carriage into his very own office, just by yelling into his mobile phone like an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> this house was built on an ancient burial ground, which is why the episode's been hosted by me. The ghost of a hunchback Victorian boy trying to explain fixed rate mortgages. <laughs> now, this next property is about £50,000 over Philip and Susan's budget. Luckily, though, Philip's grandmother has just died. <laughs> Laws of notorious people live on these here branches Piers Morgan, Katie Hopkins, Donald Trump. Escape to the country. No, this is escape to the... <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to brighten up your kitchen, turn the light on. <laughs> Susan turned her two-bedroom house into a ten-bedroom house by putting a bed in every room. <laughs> I'm Danny Dyer. Welcome to Let's Do This Gaff Up. <laughs> well, there you go. Immediately, you can see how much roomier it looks without the old lady and the oxygen cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is on likely dating profiles. Do you want a man who's comfortable to say the word love? Call me. I'm a Wimbledon umpire. <laughs> hey, do you like it when two bodies come together and fall into great ecstasy? Me too. Let's find some and watch them from the bushes. <laughs> Once you go Asian, you'll never go Caucasian. <laughs> True story? I like long walks on the beach, a pebble beach, barefoot. I love pain. I love pain! <laughs> <laughs> vegan woman in her 30s seeks vegan man for fun, companionship and joyless dinners out. <laughs> and would it impress you to know that I typed out this entire profile using my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, age 50, never married, loves books, gardening, knitting and long walks. Seeks a gentleman who's very kind and likes similar things. Must be hung like a hoover. <laughs> <laughs> Sensible man with Bingley Building Society gold account at 1.85%. Seeks woman with similar interest. <laughs> Hello, I'm looking for a bloke called Dave. He's been hanging out in Nice, apparently got his trotters up. <laughs> Man in his 40s, owner of Foldy Uppy Bike. Looking for any woman who's interested in me demonstrating my Foldy Uppy Bike. <laughs> Look, it folds up. <laughs> 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 
Ambitious man with no sense of work-life balance seeks woman. I haven't got time for this. <laughs> I could say I'm a bit old-fashioned in that I'm a phenomenal bigot. <laughs> Man with huge belly seeks concave woman. Sixties high achiever, snappy dressing leader of the Conservative Party, very horny, has the potential to fuck the whole country. <laughs> okay, again, that's the point of the Terry Lane. <laughs> that's the end of the show. This week's winners are James A. Carter, Hugh Dennis, and Tom Allen. Commiserations to Tez Ilias, Terry Dudleyman and Ed Byrne. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night. A comedian out of his comfort zone in far-flung countries, the misadventures of Ramesh Ranganathan on BBC iPlayer and here next Sunday. Friday nights on BBC Four, the place for music with smashing hits, the 80s pop map of Britain and Ireland tomorrow night at 10.